Hey everyone, today we're going to go over 20 tips to help you simply just be better at Apex Legends Season 20 and beyond. We've got tips on how to actually improve your ranked gains, game sense settings, fast armor upgrades, and a lot more. Some new and some older ones that you probably don't even know about, so let's get to it. First up, we have the fastest way you can level up your evil armor. This involves a split strategy with your teammates, but if you can, land directly on a trident and as a support or assault character, you are going to want to drive around to multiple evo harvesters, assault or support extended supply bins, and you are going to get your evo leveled up insanely fast i generally am going to recommend that you do this for about the first 45 maybe 60 seconds in a match and do not drive too far from your squad one or two stations and a few supply bins will get you off to a real quick start as always monitor your drop and be aware of who is around you don't just abandon your teammates if you are being contested if you want to take this one step further here's the literal best team comp you can run for actually the most efficient path of getting upgrades first legend you want is ballistic he gets a assault bins for being in the assault class which is 100 evo points and then he does get the first upgrade of letting him see care packages aka the skirmisher class which is another 50 evo per cp scan the second legend is vantage vantage gets you survey beacons from being in the recon class and the first upgrade can give you ring consoles filling the role of the controller legend and lastly you're going to want any support legend personally i would roll with conduit or loba as i find them to be the best for most of apex's modes loba might also help speed looting up if you are slow down a little bit in your rotations as you're trying to get all those survey beacons and ring consoles. A quick tip that is not clearly written is that if you interact with Evo Harvesters, Get Nox, and more, there's two different icons. A triple or group icon means this upgrade is going to the entire squad, and a single icon means just you are getting that Evo applied. Apex has now been out for more than five years and 20 seasons. If you are feeling overwhelmed, lost, and kind of like you can't do anything but end up back in the lobby, here's what you need to do to actually improve your game skills. It's all about progression and getting the feeling of Apex down and what really matters. This is going to be gun skill and how you practice. First is to start with the firing range. Just a few minutes a day here can make a massive difference to get weapon feel and recoil control down. Second is to immediately start playing the mix a playlist. Daily if possible. Honestly, more the better. You can't do too much here. This is going to net you dozens upon dozens, maybe even hundreds more gunfights every hour, which means combat improvement. If you aren't playing for as long or you you don't have a lot of time say less than two hours then i would just do a quick one or two minutes in the range and then start playing the battle royale so you are getting the most out of your time with the modes that you want to play like pubs or ranked speaking of ranked here's how to get the optimal gains in the new system first off the root goal really has not changed placement is going to be king but you will need some kp when you get to diamond if you want to get to masters of course platinum you can mostly get through with just placement alone for rookie through gold i would prioritize just winning the game but honestly taking an early to mid game fight should be the way to go it should be how you are going to want to think about it not necessarily 50 50 off the drop but just get an early fight i would say when there is more than 10 teams left this is because when you get to platinum you're going to really want to prioritize the first half of the game with getting one fight and one squad wipe if you get one squad wipe that's 3 kp and more or less you can chill out till the end of the game and just try to keep enemies away this is going to limit your ability to get third partied increase your placement chances across the board once you get to diamond you're still going to want to get an early fight to get 3 kp but i would also start to be a little bit riskier with taking one mid to latest game fight to get another three six kp is ideally the goal that you want to get really at any rank so if you can't get an early fight and then also win the game you're going to get a nice six kp or so from two squad wipes and this is going to get you to masters when it comes to legend upgrades there's a big thing to keep in mind for a handful of legends that is that any legend upgrade that nets you two charges needs to seriously be looked at as the upgrade you take not because having two of something is good but because as soon as you unlock the ability to get two charges you you will have that ability way more than if it is just one. This is because the second or your next charge can start building up immediately after you do get that first one. This is going to lessen the downtime between charges and increase your play possibilities. Some games your teammates just won't perform as good or yourself won't be able to get that red evo as fast. While armor swapping has been nerfed, you can actually still implement this crazy OP strategy to get your team big swaps from the ground. Whoever on the team has the highest level armor, have them pull weaker armors from death boxes and heal them up to max shields you can then drop these on the ground and for now they stay at that max color rarity obviously as soon as someone picks it up that has not achieved that level you will only get an overshield but this big overshield can mean the difference between getting knocked and living a little bit longer if you are getting pushed or third party on world's edge and olympus vaults are kind of cracked they've always been great for loot but now honestly they're a little bit too good to not recommend opening this is because not only does it just give 200 evo for opening the vault you also have a chance to get a full armor upgrade v 
Sophia, Evo caches that can't spawn in them. Plus, all that purple and gold loot is still good get. I'll also add that the ones specifically on World's Edge take very little time and effort to open, as many cargo bots are already flying pretty close by. Crafters post update do not have as many choices, but to be honest, do not waste or walk by them as in some ways, they are better now than they were in previous seasons. Before, I was always a little weary on recommending teams to craft as it slows your gameplay down, and even upon their release way back in season six, I said this like one week after they did come out, I found them slow and unimaginable, but now it does take just a quick second to get a free bat or med kit, not to mention the ammo that you can get is actually OP. And speaking of crafting ammo, a great strategy that you can do is when you are landing in a POI with a crafter is to grab a couple guns and then immediately craft ammo, especially if you are contested with multiple teams nearby. 120 rounds for two spray weapons or two stacks of ammo right away makes it way safer to take teams without running out, especially if you cannot loot as much as you may need to due to the POI getting split up by two contesting teams. An old Apex Legends tip, but still ever so viable one that many may not know about revolves around the fortified class of legends. Yes, fortified lets thick boys take less damage, but the big thing is that this does not apply to the heads of any fortified legend. So if you see a Newcastle, Gibraltar, Caustic, take a second longer and just aim and prioritize for getting a headshot to get maximum damage. Apex Legends cosmetics in some ways have really gotten out of control, but one nice thing is that the store saw a complete overhaul recently. If you are unaware, scroll down in the store and there's now a recolor only section. This here is more or less free stuff you can get from those red tokens, the legend tokens. If you already have the base version of that skin, you got to take advantage of all that freebies that we can get. Sometimes you need to understand the larger picture of Apex's meta to get a good grasp beyond simple tips and tricks. Apex has seen an uptick in being more aggressive due to the ranked changes and weapon changes. Larger mag weapons will begin to see more utilization and usefulness. Prowler, Volt, Flyline are all great options to better put down teams of enemies, whereas the R9 struggles massively even to get one knock without having to reload. A good tip to know is that anytime you do need reload, you basically make it so your time to kill becomes the worst out of any gun in the game when comparing it to something that doesn't need a reload. If you don't have the best aim, pick the larger mag weapon for better consistency and increased success in your gunfights. Two quick tips for Mirage. If you haven't played the Bamboozle King in a while, Mirage can now get a 30 second ultimate, which is insane. Absolutely take this upgrade every time as this does mean he only has 15 seconds of downtime where he won't have this ultimate ready to use or already be active. Another tip that revolves around his decoys. Most know the old fake looting tip where you put a decoy on the death box to bait enemies, but also dropping a decoy at a crafter or crouched on the door can be a real great way to confuse enemies into shooting you, especially the crouched on door one. I find this will even let you do a quick counterplay, whereas the enemy has no idea that it's a decoy on that doorway and you can run around and shoot them in the back or the side. I say it a lot, but truthfully, the best way to not have a poor time in Apex Legends and to perform better is to never play with random players. Building consistency and learning your teammates play styles can go so far, so be sure to join my community Discord to never have random struggles and you can't ask me any Apex questions that you might have as well. A seemingly small but massive mistake involves your initial looting path or grabbing. You really don't ever want to pick up everything off the ground when you are first looting. Grabbing gray attachments for weapons that you are not going to use or excess non-relevant ammo is a super big throw on your part. This is amplified if enemies did land with you. Not being able to pick up that one item you really need because your inventory is clogged with junk and wasted stuff can take valuable seconds or a fraction thereof to drop those items. Also, if you wipe a squad and you need to loot a death box super fast, but you have so much wasted crap in your inventory, this again just slows things down when you are getting third partied. It's a small thing, but you'll notice how good players and pros really never waste time picking up items that they know that they will never need or want to use. Also, every decision and second that you do take doing something in Apex could have longer lasting ramifications, like not getting to height right before an enemy team, missing out on an end game positioning and so on. It's going to be all these little small things that add up and it's going to affect you in the long run. There's so many great legends in Apex and most are viable, but I do want to mention three legends that you do need to use that are not on top of the pick rate in Apex. The first is going to be Valkyrie. Her upgrades really return her passive jetpack to form and make her a real combat threat. Not to mention her rotation capabilities from her ultimate are still honestly great if you are playing ranked. Second is Loba. Loba is my definitive best beginner legend that works in both pubs and ranked Apex. For pubs, you're going to get looted up faster, meaning more fights and better improvement because of it. And as for ranked, you'll have more safety when it comes to looting at end game, and you won't have to make a bad decision just because you ran out of ammo or healing items. Lastly, we got Fuse. He's incredible at just 
increased farming damage, and overall, I find the ability to learn grenade usage to be so much better since you can hold two in a stack, and he has a lot more play options with that grenade arm. Also, and not to mention, you'll be able to apply pressure all game long, which can be very valuable in ranked as well. In the old days of Apex Legends armor, you always had a decision to be made when it came to armor swapping a purple for like a lesser blue or even a gray. Generally, you didn't really want to do this as you were going to lose your armor. This mostly was evident when you had to armor swap mid fight as every little shield did matter though. Today, that's not the case. You should always be armor swapping or grabbing that core that is in the death box. Even getting a little 50 gray evo boost is a pure addition to your health now. You're going to be healthier to take another fight, but more importantly, this can save on batteries by just popping a few cells if you do need to top off your armor still. If you are a controller or an MNK player and you are struggling with your aim, I mean, let's be real, aim assist does everything for controller players, so if you are an MNK player, to be honest, your sensitivity might be too high. The easiest way to make things feel better when it comes to your shot is to lower your sensitivity. For controller players, I would literally just start with 3-3 or 4-4 classic. Linear at these senses also works if you are more familiar with the linear aim style, but do not make it more complex than it needs to be. You don't really need high sense if your game sense is any way decent as you can tell where enemies are and you shouldn't really need to be snapping around doing 180s to target your enemies. If you find that you're doing this a lot snapping around, it's probably because your game sense isn't that great and you need to just look out a little bit more and be a little bit more aware. Since there's no armor off the drop, if you land and get decent to better guns, you 1000% need to push an enemy as soon as possible. Because of the armor changes, they are not going to have any sort of edge anymore from that lovely RNG via them getting a blue, purple, or gold armor, and you absolutely need to think of this as a mathematical and statistical advantage in your favor. But the bigger thing to remember is to not play scared and get used to being in uncomfortable situations like pushing off spawn. It's going to be the real only true way to improve. Also remember that it's okay to be bad. Like not everyone is great at everything all the time, but the key is time. You can get better. Anyone can with the right determination, work ethic, and time in. Check out this video for more on how to improve in Apex Legends. And as always, happy gaming legends.